So, uh, death is uh, uh, just uh, exaggerated beyond a point. There's a whole lot of uh, learning behind the fear of death. There's a great ego, there's a great self-importance. And there's a lot of attachments, a lot of desires, a lot of dreams, a lot of selfish interests working behind the fear of death. By uh, so many linkages, if you look at uh, fear of fear of death itself is a separate phenomenon. It is not a real fear. It is like fear of elephants or fear of snakes or fear of enemies and all that. Okay? So, if you look at that as a variant, what is the invariant is what I have told you. The invariant of fear of death is nothing but uh, induced, trained, uh, uh, classical conditioning, like the dog is conditioned to salivate with the sight of a food, a human child is conditioned by threatening expressions and shouting and etc. of the parents and subsequently reinforced by so many stories, so many uh, uh, inputs of varied kinds. So, it is a conditioned response only, you know. But uh, whether it is conditioned uh, classically or conditioned uh, apparently, operant conditioning, by, by, I mean by information and by training, whatever it is, it is a perceived so-called reality for the individual. They, but what is the referent of that? Investigate. This you can do to when the, some clients also. In fact, behind a great lot of mental uh, dysfunctions or uh, other uh, other symptoms, the, there is a root element of fear also. Fear and anxiety. And already you know the fear, role of fear and anxiety in case of simple mindsets, I mean so-called mental traps. But uh, when everybody uh, theoretically has that so-called mortal fear, but the same everybody, like in that inverted yukaru, beyond a point, in fact, nobody is afraid of death. Look at the soldiers. Look at the people in quarreling situation. Look at the mob. So-called crowd reactions. That uh, crowd reactions, people will go rampant and kill each other and uh, even when everybody knows that I may get killed, they will go and kill other people and they get killed, very cool. So, uh, fear of death is just a paradox. It happens, uh, let us say, mostly a comfort zone bound mind, which Vinaganesh is very likely to have. She is her only one girl child, I suppose, in the family. And okay. she, no. I am a sister and brother. Also. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. All right. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Anyway, she was a very protected girl child, no doubt. And uh, uh, she was extremely beautiful. Even now, she is very beautiful. Even beautiful girls also have this problem of fear of death. So, a fear of annihilation, fear of uh, extinction. So, uh, um, uh, that uh, so many linkages are there. Maintaining that variant, cut down all those linkages, cut down the varied orbits of variants are creating that invariant of the fear of death in you, you know, that's all. Okay. And that you think when you sit down comfortably in your sofa, when you think about that, there will be a fear. But when you come across it, it will not be there at all. It is like the fear of the good singing girl before entering the stage. Will I be able to do it? Will I be able to do it? No, 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 I won't be able to be. But uh, put her on the stage. So one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, she takes the first line, then she forgot and she is singing beautifully. And you are a marvelously beautiful singer. That's all. So just do not think about it in comfort zone situations at home. Yeah. When that quote comes, you look at the creature and ask the creature. Ask your body, ask your hand, are you afraid of death? Ask your eyes, are you afraid of death? Ask your cheeks, are you afraid of death? Ask every part of the body, are they, is, are they, whether they are afraid of death. None of them. That's all, finished. And you can create further linkages. 
And what is this bloody God? That itself is the evidence that everybody is afraid of uh, annihilation, extinction, suffering. They are all somehow linked to this fear of death. You know, you can see most of the time, old age people, they have become more what you call religious. They go to the temple, they go to, they keep some deity. They are all afraid of death. So by, by tuning with a God, some deity, they think that they will be salvaged from death. The fear of death is, I would say, it is a supreme arrogance of the idiotic human mind. It, I would say. It is either supreme arrogance or absolute ridiculous self-importance. They don't have any perception about the world. They don't see the n number of ants that get trampled under their feet. They don't see the so-called chicken and mutton and cows getting killed and when they enjoy the so-called non-vegetarian dish in five-star restaurants. They don't feel anything about the death of somebody in distances. They don't feel anything about the death of a great lot of people in somewhere in riots and flood and war somewhere else. But when it comes to their death, what the hell, who the hell they think about themselves? So, if somebody is talking about fear of death, what I say is that uh, call him nearby and give a bloody slap on his cheek. Who the hell are you to be afraid of death? <laughs> yes. That is a big word. Right. Yeah. And uh, so, when you talk about Tibetan book, that's a totally different thing. Yes. Tibetan book of the death is about an entirely, entirely different uh, variant, invariant linkage, uh, intentionality, orbit network. That once in this human condition, which is a condition rendered by the nature process, hmm? because of the wonder of that nature process, there is a so called we have to use so-called everywhere. A so-called consciousness, or the, some centering of the consciousness, the I, the so-called I that feels, the I that thinks, the I that experiences, the I that is afraid, etc., etc., etc. And that I is the I. I am afraid. That's a wrong usage. Actually, it is, I am sensing my fear. The I is not afraid. I feel pain. That's a wrong language, actually. How can pain report itself? So, I is not the pain, I is not the fear, I is not any of the things, any of the language reported uh, uh, sensation or perception or cognition or experience or concepts or ideas or anything, they are all not at all linked with the so called dieness of the eye. But this I has to report it, that's all. And uh, that reporting aspect is not at all linked with any of the reported aspects. Once again, that reporting aspect is not at all linked with any of the reported aspects. In other words, there is more or less an independent uh, uh, identity for that so called. Uh, Whatever that is referred to by the word I, that central point of, that invariant of consciousness, which senses all the variants, like the cupness which is present in all the cups, that is a fact. But that does not mean that uh, the cupness is physically linked with the cup. Similarly, the I is not at all linked with any of the reported feelings, reported variants. Okay? So, that I-ness of the I has an independent existence actually. 
independent detached existence. That is why it is able to sense everything else. Okay? And that tininess can be contacted. Rather, that, that I can become that I. Like I sense my fear or I sense the taste, let us say. I feel sad. That I, I itself is not sad. I is sensing the sad. So that I, which has its attention to all the feeling variants or variations, that I has that power of attention. Otherwise, how I will notice the variants of experiences and sensations and perceptions and thoughts. Okay? So that I is nothing but, let us say, a, 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 a point of attention, let us say so. That is the fact of it. That I know. When I say I know that, that I is nothing but a, a, an attention field, an attention source. So that attention source can get uh, fused with that attention source itself. When? Using that gateless gate of death, it is possible only at a death. So, that entire Tibetan methodology is to prepare your uh, will, prepare your mindset, prepare your attention and uh, uh, direction of attention to utilize that only one and only one and only one chance. Because you cannot repeat that. So, when that moment of death is approaching, everybody would sense it. So, every consciousness, sorry, every eyeness, like I is sensing that I am sad, that I will sense that I am going to end. Ordinary people may use the word death. There are so, so many cases when some very, very, uh, very unique individuals uh, are about to die, they will call their people and say, I am going to die and uh, call my children, my sister, my brother and uh, they will die. Because they happen to have that sensitivity, that's it. Even my father, three days before the death, he told his wife that he would die, die after three days. And on the day of his death, in the very morning, he himself took the water, it was called, I mean, winter season or something like that. He himself took the water in a, in a vessel and heated it up, had a bath, came to the front, down, uh, front room, lied down on a bed and uh, called his younger son and said, I am, I am going. And the last sentence he made was, do not call the doctors, that's all. So, that is because he was a prepared person, he was an enlightened person, he had done all kinds of meditation, he was a disciple of Swami, original Swami Brahmananda Sivayogi of the Mysore Mat. Oh, that is the training. So, mm -hmm. that training is possible for every one of you. That's I am training you with that perspective in mind also. That is genius. Mm -hmm. That is genius in self. At that only one chance, the only one jump possible, you will get plenty of time and um, immense attention. But you have to be careful, unfortunately, that uh, there is uh, no other people standing around and creating nonsense around you. That's very important. You have to tell them very clearly, please leave me alone. If you understand, you just stand there and sing a song. And uh, you have to, with all your dedicated attention, focus on what is actually going on. That's enough. That's enough. At that time, you will have the immense power of attention because at that time, your attention will not be distracted by anything else. 
But I don't know why the Tibetan monks are creating a whole lot of stories about that. That's all not required. That's all required for the mediocrity. I told you any printed detail, any common communication is addressed to more than 9, 10, 12 people. To one person, I am treating you all like one person. I want to tell you only one thing. Like in creativity therapy, I am telling you only one thing. Please remember to do this. Every one of you will definitely know when the so-called uh, uh, dissipation or disappearance is going to happen. I am, I am guaranteeing that you will have no worries, no problems. But do not allow other people to stand there and uh, make a lot of noise. That you have to tell them. That may need a, a little bit of, uh, because at that time you will have a remaining consciousness with you. You have to tell them, please don't disturb me, you enter into a room, if you want you enter your puja room or some other comfortable room and lock the door or just close the door and tell, just don't disturb me. And then lie down in completely relaxed position and focus your attention on what is happening to the body, that's enough. Then, whatever is mentioned in the Tibetan Book of the Dead, then according to them, uh, that attention consciousness will uh, pass through that gate and that, uh, that can um, get uh, uh, completely tuned with the entire universe process, the process of the universe, that's all. So what happens for people who, who cannot do such a thing. So you are telling yeah, yeah, they will all die uh, you know, a simple death and that's why the so-called uh, some identified concepts of uh, their uh, consciousness moving around and they use many other concepts like their Atma or their uh, what you call, uh, whatever they have a lot of names and there are so many karmas uh, for the departed mm -hmm. soul then the mm -hmm. so-called Svatham and all those pujas are done because they have an understanding that they have not uh, their consciousness is not uh, come uh, tuned up uh, at the time of death. Okay. Yeah. That is it. <laughs> Master, can I recall uh, uh, Other than that, there is nothing. All the myths and stories about all uh, these things are just nonsense. I am telling you. You mm -hmm. can you can be aware of just one thing. Human beings are not even 10% of organic beings on this planet Earth. All these are the philosophies and perspectives created by people who are afraid of death. Yeah. That's all. Whoever it is, there is no special importance for this human creature in this planet Earth. Because they have created mobile phones and uh, uh, advanced uh, jet engines and uh, office buildings and governments and schools and knowledges and dresses and languages and all those things, they think that they are a separate entity. That's all. All these are uh, partial generations of the stupid concepts about God and religion and related perspectives. This all of you will come to know. This all. Home, which is called, called homo centered, human centered logic only. The very concept of God itself, I would say, we are bloody bullshit. It is all importance of human being. As if human beings are the only thing. God created the plants and the trees and the other animals, and they are not, uh, they are, they are not uh, uh, significant. Okay, that is what I call, this is called geniusness. Understand existence, don't get trapped inside the human condition because you have a human body. Do not get trapped in the ideologies created by uh, majority, uh, majority appeasing philosophies created by whoever it is. Whoever it is, whether it is in Padanjali or Vyasa or Dhanandri or whoever very big uh, mystics say that it's all absolute nonsense.
we talk about tuning with the nature what do you mean by tuning with the nature that's what uh, the advantage of human intellect your attention that is uh, for some kind of uh, an equilibrium of the consciousness in the human condition with that power of attention and why it is possible because the power of attention or the power of the tie itself is a donation is a gift from the nature process using that gift uh, use, uh, at that point of the last gate you can enter into the other world then there is no you even when you get normally enlightened there is no you then what about the ultimate detachment then then that will become a part of the air air particle or water particle or fire particle or whatever that's all matter and energy cannot be disturbed so there will be some matter somewhere that's all and every time you are afraid of death yeah actually you are intimidating insulting your own uh, ender consciousness you know anyways one thing whether you are afraid of death or not when the real death comes you will not be afraid right <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is uh, uh, important especially as a genius himself to be genuinely get rid of the fear of death yeah. that is by like in creativity therapy that is not by resolving the fear of death yeah. but developing an evolved understanding about existence of everything that's by developing an evolved understanding that my existence and the existence of the butterflies and the cats and the birds and the trees are identical by having the uh, realization that in the, even the very tongue which is talking very vocal system which is talking about fear of death is not afraid of death the very neurons and the heart and the liver and the intestine all those bones and flesh blood structure is not afraid of death then who is afraid of death what is afraid of death just that center of consciousness mistaken as the i that ego is afraid of death so carry that fear and suffer that soul okay i am okay i am afraid of but is that so oh i see yeah i am afraid of that oh. you see, you laugh and say somebody if you happen to talk about eliminating fear of death to one of your clients yeah. somebody may ask you back like a balagopal kind of a person will ask you back yeah. madam do you have fear of death of course yes. but i laugh at it that is not my creation somebody told me somebody trained me but i also have fear of death but i laugh at it i know that my creature my being is not afraid of death that's what i am telling you mm-hmm. because my being is not afraid of death i am also not afraid of death that's all even if i am afraid of my death the being is not afraid of death and the being is the one that dies all right then why do you bother okay the being has the feeling of fear the being only the creature only dies okay dies and dissipates and uh, 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 get like uh, any other uh, what you call uh, dog on the right road dies and dissipates and atrophy you are not the creature right then why do you bother and that you will disappear very very easily and very comfortably in normal death so how this creative perspective that is the creativity therapy for fear of death got the point so 
be creative, creative being creative, you, you are not eligible to have that fear of death. And, uh, and I am telling you, fear of death has some connection with the digestion system. So keep your digestive system clean. Yeah. yeah. It may be unbelievable for many of you, but uh, it is a fact. Yeah. And uh, train your body by complete, uh, what you call, Upavasa. Uh, an upavasa, real upavasa should be done for uh, 24 hours. And uh, for, for a real upavasa, it should be, uh, the body should be prepared. It is not that I have <laughs> what you call two plates of mutton biryani today. And then, <laughs> then <coughs> subsequent to 24 days of upavasa, no. You have to gradually reduce your food to the minimum most and from that point you have to take upavasa for 24 hours and train your body for that and you will have uh, uh, many many more miraculous perceptions. Actually we are, I am planning to do one planning a fasting from Monday on. And yeah. Just, from this Monday on. Mm. No, do, don't do fasting, but to do upavasa. There's a great lot of difference between the fasting that the world is talking about and upavasa. Yes. That upavasa should uh, will have any advantage, actually speaking, only if you have proper attention to what is going on. Alright? Why the word upavasa? When, when you do not give food to the creature, you use the word upavasa. Fasting is a mechanical, stupid word of the Western and other uh, unevolved uh, philosophies. But Upavasa, the word means to stay near. Upa meaning near, Vasa meaning to stay. So by not giving food, you are likely to go close to what? The creature. Yeah. The creature. Of course to the nature process. So, actually under Ubhavasa, you should be uh, uh, writing something or doing something. Uh, why you should write something or do something or read something is, if you just like that sit somewhere, your attention may go here and there. Alright? And otherwise, you just lie down and focus your attention on the abdominal region. Just beneath the abdominal uh, skin, you focus your attention and play around with your attention to the entire body and try to identify what is happening during the time of whatever you need. The referent of whatever is hunger. Try to identify the referent of hunger when you take that upavasa. Do that uh, once in three months and uh, even doing it once, uh, you will see that the so-called fear of death will vanish almost close to zero, maybe even zero. I don't know whether you have noticed the poor people, the poorest of the poor are not at all afraid of death because they don't have proper food, that's why. So, too much of comfortable life, too much of comfortable food mm. uh, uh, is one of the core reasons why there is fear of death. Do not tell this to anybody, they won't be able to digest it, <laughs> digest this food. You will, you understand it, that's all. Because the intestine get uh, intestine gets sort of conditioned with uh, comforts, like it gets conditioned with uh, alcohol or uh, too much of uh, so-called good food, etc., etc. That industry, you are basically, I told you, the human every entity is basically nothing but an industrial canal. Okay. 
Every entity in this planet Earth is nothing but an industrial canal. A food intake process eliminates mechanism. At the human level, there is an advanced brain and flesh, blood, uh, uh, body or structure. At the monkey level, little less advanced, that's all. And Earthworm is the founders, that's all. So, if the intestinal canal is properly related to and properly uh, managed and properly realized of its uh, real role in existence, then great lot of uh, philosophy, uh, truth perceptions will originally or originate in you. That's how the ancient mystics and rishis got all their originations. Yeah, Minash, you wanted to ask something. What is that? Uh, Master, it was not a question. It was, um, I, I thought I'll recount an incident which happened um, three days before my father died. Don't do it. Okay. Uh, what, uh, what, anything else you want to say? No, oh. Master. No, no, nothing else. Okay. So, uh, since we're talking about death, yeah. uh, so death, uh, uh, so the eyeness of eye is both a physical and a mental. Now, when you're talking about that mental being is where the uh, thought processes, the attention, all that thing. So when the eye disappears, so the physical that, being, you know, first of all, you said it is physical or uh, so-called mental. It is, so -called mental. it is neither physical nor mental. But it is generated by them. It is maintained by that. Because when this manifested cup of your being, body is there, that that invariant just gets induced there, that's all. Hmm. It is actually not there. But it is there. Hmm. That's why it is called that's why locating it is called the gateless gate. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so like, I'm, I'm trying to like, get to, like, get to like, understanding of death. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like uh, when you, what you call, rub uh, a friend for some time, the flame just occurs there. Mm. In fact, flame is a good example. You just heat up a surface, flame uh, uh, just appears there. Similarly, when this uh, organic engines are ready, uh, uh, this, that, uh, that invariant of uh, whatever we name, whatever we, you refer to, the, rather the, I would say, I would say very clearly, the so-called referent of the eye gets induced there. And so long as that piece of wood is ready to burn, that flame will be there. And when the wood is out, that flame will uh, go. That's all. That flame is the eye. And that I say that the wood has feelings, the wood has this, the wood has that, the wood is that, etc., etc. <laughs> that, that, that flame only is reflecting the, the conditions uh, of this, which is reported by the word I, by the trained mind, that's all. Get the point? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when when the, when this piece of wood, which is about to finish their burning, and if by that time, whatever is facilitated by this very flame, which is the power of attention, can become the flame, then in that moment, uh, that, that flame linkage awareness can go back to wherever that flame has come from. And that wherever has no connection with anything that is experienced by this piece of wood. That's all. Got it? Mm, great. It is, it is not that in this wood the flame originated from the wood. No. When the wood is ready, I mean that the fertilized egg is ready uh, by the about third or fourth month, that flame enters actually. Hmm. What are that? What are, is that your question? Uh, yes, sir. So I, yeah, I'm trying to understand the concept sense of uh, death and uh, 
trying to understand that. So from that perspective, that's what I was trying to ask this question. And yeah, another is, first of all, yeah. wait, wait. First of all, we have to get rid of this word that it's a highly corrupt word. Because every word has its property assumed by collective usage and collective consciousness, like you know. For example, uh, uh, you call somebody you you bastard. So, because what is the meaning of bastard? Somebody who does not have a proper identification of a father. But the way it is used, it has assumed a certain load, you know. Similarly, the word death has already assumed a certain collective consciousness which was imposed upon every child. That you must be aware of. Anyway, all right, come on. Yeah, you are, so you can look at the, that is why I have been always insisting and still insisting on and continue to insist on referent and referent reality perception. Do a concept sense of death, so do and you use it, okay, whatever it is, I don't know. And the, because the dictionary meaning, like the word meaning of genius is very little bit uh, biased. I don't know, I have not looked into the meaning of the word death, but uh, you forget about the concept sense. Look at the referent of death. That referent of so-called death is happening to every creature. When you cut the head of a goat for sacrifice or to eat, there is death. Death meaning that the way that assemblage was functioning before, that is stopped, that's all. So, for this assemblage also. Mm -hmm. Like a car, its gearbox is worn out, the gears are worn out, the clutch plate is worn out, the clutch disc is worn out, okay, the steering gear is worn out, the tire treads are gone out, suspensions are gone out, okay, crankshaft is gone out, but still it can run for some more time. But finally, when let us say when the crankshaft <laughs> is broken or when the cylinder is broken, and the vehicle stops. Similarly, when the crankshaft or the clutch disc or the uh, um, gearbox of the human being is gone, it will stop functioning, that's all. Why should you bother about that? Is your creature your creature? Does it do whatever you want to do? No. So your creature is with you, but at the same time it is not with you. There is a gateless gate relationship between you and the creature also. It is under your control, at the same time it is not under your control. You did not create that creature and uh, uh, that creature will uh, uh, become dysfunctional one day. Only that certain mindsets of fear and anxiety, some learning, like we already said, some learnings, some observations, okay? Colored by false interpretations and emotionally loaded things, convey this. In my village, Kalimangalam, the war, when somebody dies, the first thing they do is order for the band party. I mean, the, those who do the talams and sing a song. Second thing, they, the same person will go and call these people and he will go to the market and buy flowers. And they do a wonderful send off. And nobody loves, uh, sorry, nobody cries, nothing. Mm -hmm. I have asked a lot of people, they do not know how that practice was originated. Mm. It's a neurosis, that fear of death is a neurosis of the modern times. It's a neurosis of the, created by the medical professions. It's a neurosis created by religious ideologies. Because only by connecting with that fear of death, this criminal religious leaders can control the humanity. Right. That's all. So fear of death, is that so? <laughs> All right, Vina, proceed because uh, uh, some, somebody asked, uh, Ramesh asked, is that so? Very correctly. That's also very interesting. There were many other concepts, and Ramesh precisely picked up, is that so? Yeah. That's what uh, I'm also ending up in the discussion about so called, uh, so called death. Okay. Hmm. Death is there. Is that so? Yeah. I'm afraid of death. Is that so? Let me be afraid. Why are you bothered about your fear? 
<laughs> right. Hold it. Okay, thank you.